Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now a few weeks ago I made a video uh, kind of looking at some of the unintentional training methods that have cropped up over the years and you guys really seem to like it so today I wanted to go over some more unintentional training methods actually because there's been a lot of methods that have been nerfed uh, because they weren't really intended to be a training method. Now today I'm going to be going over a few that are actually still in the game and a couple that got patched out a few years ago. Now these kind of range from being a novelty training method that is kind of viable, kind of all the way to methods that are game-breakingly overpowered. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and let's get started. Now first up here, once again, I have an agility training method, and this one was initially added uh, with the addition of the Monkey Madness 2 quest. Now agility historically hasn't really been very AFK. Generally you have to run around a rooftop agility course, uh, complete a bunch of quests, or do barbarian fishing. So I guess barbarian fishing is technically more AFK, but the XP per hour is terrible. However, after the addition of the Monkey Madness 2 tunnels specifically, a YouTuber actually by the name of Michael RS kind of discovered a unintended training method. I'm not sure if he was the first one to discover it, he was the one who made it popular. Now, the way this method worked is in the dungeon there are pressure pads, and by jumping over one you get 26 agility experience. Now as you didn't fail the obstacle very frequently, you were actually able to jump back and forth really quickly, gaining 26 agility experience every time. Now what made this method more AFK than others is the fact that, uh, well with the help of some third party clients, you were actually able to not ever move your mouse and click back and forth continuously. Now to achieve this result, you actually needed to either have a really high ping of around 750. This would cause the game world to lag one tick for you, which means that when you spam click the pressure pad, you were actually lagging so badly that you would go back over the other way instead of having to move your mouse and click on it again. Now apparently you're also able to get this result by setting your FPS to 5 in Runelite, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. Now using this method, you're actually able to get up to 44k agility experience per hour without actually having to move your mouse at all, and you could just spam click in a single location. Now this is not the quickest agility training method out there, but the fact that it was really AFK made it pretty beneficial for a lot of players. With that said though, I don't think a lot of people ended up doing this because it really wasn't that well known. However, I do think the method has been patched out now, so I don't think it works anymore. Okay, so next up here is actually a magic training method, and this one was kind of game breaking when it was in the game. Now this magic training method was using the heal group spell, which is on the lunar spell book. And for some reason, whenever there is a weird training method that crops up, it seems to always be on the lunar spell book because realistically, not many people use that spell book for anything. Now what made the heal group spell overpowered compared to some of the other ones? Well the main difference between the heal group spell today and the heal group spell back in 2016 is the fact that back in 2016 there was no delay when you cast it. Now this pretty much meant that you could cast a spell as quickly as you could click either with your hands or some of the more unscrupulous people would use possibly an auto clicker. Now each time you cast the spell you got 124 experience and it was actually possible to cast a spell 10 times per tick which means that with some high intensity clicking, players are getting uh, somewhere between 4 and 7 million experience per hour in Magic, which is game breaking for sure. Now logistically, there are definitely some issues here. First up, uh, it's very expensive because you're casting the spell so many times and so quickly. Every second, theoretically, you'd be blowing around 30k. Uh, so it was a very expensive method. And there's also the logistical issue that you need an account uh, that you can heal and you also need to heal your main account because you're transferring health, you're not really healing. So a popular method was to rock cake down the hit points of your alt account and also just have some healing food on your main account. Now another interesting option was actually to go to Narda and to heal up on the statue there because it gives you a free heal and on top of that it goes over your maximum hit points which means you could do the method for longer. Now even with all of those issues, the fact that you could max your magic in 2 hours potentially with this method, I kind of got the attention of the Jagex moderators and they ended up nerfing it uh, late June of 2016. Now just in case anyone was interested on the cost of this method, now it is possible to do about 10 spells per tick which is around 60,000 casts per hour. Now just for this calculation's sake, let's just say you're doing 45,000. Now at 45,000 casts per hour, that is going to mean this method is 133 million GP per hour, or at the current price is around 24 GP per XP. I mean that is pretty expensive, but considering how quick it is, that's actually kind of in the realm of possibility for me. 
I mean, maxing your magic in two or three hours would be awesome. But now there's always going to be methods out there that exploit the uses of multiple accounts and weird interactions. I'm not saying we should remove all of them, but in this case, the potential experience threshold is so high, I think they were justified in removing it. Now, next up here is actually a method that is still in the game, and it is considered to be the meta EHP method for combat training. Now, again, it does involve multiple accounts, but it's actually possible to get extremely high amounts of combat experience every hour, and it involves the use of the Din's Bulwark and neck reels. Neck reel, bulwark, neck work. I think that is why they called it that. <laughs> now the way this method works is by using the Din's Bulwark's special attack. Now the Din's Bulwark special attack is an AoE ability which can hit up to 10 enemies in a 11 by 11 square around you, which means the special attack can give you a lot of experience if there's a lot of enemies around. Now the special attack does require 50% of your spec, which means you can only really use it twice in a short succession. However, some people developed a method that involves two alt accounts. Now these, now these two accounts are pretty much there to spec transfer you. Now essentially what you do is you bring your main account to the neck reels, and you're also going to bring your two alt accounts there. From there you're going to use the Din's Bulwark special attack twice, and then you are going to spec transfer with one of your alt accounts. Now that account is going to teleport back to its house, Use an ornate rejuvenation pool to get its special attack energy back, and then it's going to teleport back to Zaya and run back down. And to do this without any downtime, you need to do it with two alt accounts. Now the reason neck reels are popular is because they are very close to a teleport, which means you only will need two alt accounts for this method. If you were to do it somewhere else, you'd probably need more, just because you have to run a longer distance. Now this method theoretically allows you to get around 325,000 experience in attack, as well as I think it's possible in strength as well. Now obviously this method has quite a lot of setup costs. For one, you need two alt accounts that have a near maxed POH, and on top of that they need to have level 91 magic with lunar diplomacy completed. So yes, it has a very high requirement, yet the potential rewards are very good. It is by far the quickest training method out there for a melee stat, the only other thing close is chinning on defensive mode, which can get a similar amount of defense experience, but still I'm pretty sure Jagex never intended this to be a training method, but considering the requirements for it, I think they're going to leave it in the game for now. Okay, and finally here we have the Blast Furnace Strength Training Method. Now this method is in uh, EHP, not by a long shot. It actually only gives you 12,000 experience every hour, so objectively it's not a very good training method. However, what makes this actually good for some players is the fact that it doesn't give you hit points experience. Now this can be beneficial for building certain pure accounts for PvP, for example an Obby Mauler, and also has the benefit of being extremely AFK. Now the trade-off here is you're only going to be getting 12,000 experience every hour, but I know this was never intended to be a training method because you only get 2 experience every tick. So I'm sure someone went in there and just like, well, screw it, we'll give a token amount of experience, we'll just do 2 experience and strength, nobody is going to use that as a training method. Well now here we are with it being a pretty viable training method, players are looking to find a blast pump world. Now the reason this method uh, would actually be beneficial to have a blast pump world is because there is a bit of upkeep to keep this method going, but only one person actually needs to do that. Now the blast furnace was originally designed to have uh, a couple of players keeping the blast furnace running. Now that involved stoking the coals, fixing pipes, and of course pumping it. Now the pumping motion is what actually gives the strength experience, yet for the blast furnace to keep functioning, you need to have players operating the other parts as well. Now if you did this on your own on an empty world, you would actually have to do all of that yourself. However, on a world with multiple people using that for the same goal, the strength experience would remain at around 12,000 experience per hour. Now after Kemp2 made a video, uh, World 319 was actually very popular for this method specifically. And this is really a better alternative instead of going to a popular world, as it's actually possible to mess up the pump for other people, or at least it used to be possible. Now just in case you were wondering, to max your strength using this method would actually take about 1080 hours, uh, so it's definitely going to take a long time to get 99 strength with 10 HP, but that account is going to look so cool. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Those are four unintended training methods, some of them still in the game, some are not. But once again, if you have any other interesting training methods that used to be in the game and were removed for either being too overpowered or just unintended, leave a comment down below, I always appreciate it. And if you did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate it if you left it a like. Thanks a lot guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.